Hello Church, my name is Catherine Wollstonecroft and I'm part of North Location. It's my absolute privilege to be able to share with you my miracle story today. And no apologies if you've already heard this because even doing this today has helped me remember the goodness of God on the journey that we went on. Now that journey started 24 years ago when Julian and I found out that we were having our first baby, a very much wanted baby and the first grandchild on both sides of the family. Sadly though, at our 20 week scan, we were given the news that our baby only had half of its heart. The left side of the heart hadn't formed. And on that day, we were given three options that no one would want to choose between. The first was to have a termination. The second was to um, bring the baby home with no surgery and he would probably live for a few days. And the third was to start a procedure of three operations, which had a 50% success rate with him only having a life expectancy of 20s to 30s. We just didn't want to have to make a choice. And these were very dark few days around the scan, even weeks where we were just in a state of shock couldn't even pray at times and that's when I relied on friends to pray. My mum gave me a verse at that time from the Psalms and it was weeping will remain for the night but joy will come in the morning and I clung to that verse and we did as a family. The first sign that a miracle was coming was when I had a scan a month later and the doctor said that the aorta in my baby's heart had really got stronger. It was bigger and, it, and they decided that they wouldn't need to do the very first operation. That to me was an amazing answer to prayer because I didn't have to make a decision. My baby was going to live um, without having to have the open heart surgery at the beginning. We began to feel the peace of God. We knew we found, we found out we were having a boy and we named him Oliver and Oliver means peace. As my pregnancy continued, I did still have dark days where I would be in a fear or panic, but I would pray and I would give it to God. I wanted to plan, I wanted to prepare, I was desperate to buy a pram. And one of the lovely ladies at our church, Sylvia Hanford, told me to put a fleece out and ask God for a sign, and that's what I did. I prayed, and that night I asked for something to come in the post the next day. Imagine my delight when I ran downstairs the next day and saw one envelope on the mat with the big words, prepare for your baby. God's interested in our little things that consume us. He wants to make them better if we give it to him. As an ex-midwife, I knew that having a baby and being induced with your first baby could take quite a while. And I didn't want Oliver to have to have that strain on his heart. So I began to pray for a quick labour. Again, God intervened. What an amazing miracle because Oliver was born in a couple of hours with no strain on his heart. Now, I've got to be honest, when the doctors took him away to scan him after he was born, I was sure that they would come back and tell me that his heart was totally whole, that they'd made a mistake, that it was like, wow, what, what's happened here? But no, they came back and they just said in a normal voice, this baby's still this baby's got the heart condition that we thought and he will need to have surgery in the future and everything that they told us was true i wanted a miracle that was a bit different than that i wanted the miracle of wow it's all sorted don't worry but i still trusted god i still knew that god had his hand upon oliver and we brought him home and we began to enjoy being a family of three when Oliver was around nine months old, I was in church and we had a visiting speaker and he had a healing ministry and he asked for people to come forward for prayer, for healing. And I remember thinking, well, what's the point? I've believed this before and it's not happened and I doubted. But I stood there in my seat and I did a deal with God. And I said, look, God, I need a God word. I know that if you tell me he's going to live to he's going to be and live to be an old man, then I just know I have to trust you. So Julian and I took Oliver forward and this guest speaker looked at him and he said, this boy's got a condition with his heart, but he's going to live to be a mighty man of God and he will live to be an old man. I have never doubted since. When doctors tell me however or but it remains to be seen, I just know that I have my God word, that Oliver is going to live to be an old man and I put my total trust in God for his future. Most recently, 
in COVID times, Oliver's been on his own to have a cardiac catheter. Now, I was pretty demented because I'm used to doing all these things, but he's married now. He knows what he's doing. He had to go on his own. But we had a great surgeon operate and he humoured me by voice taping what he had found at, at the surgery. So just let me read this to you. I was, I was bowled over. He said... There is no obstruction in the surgeon's beautifully created aortic arch. The surgeon has done a lovely job. Wow. That were the exact words he said. And this reminded me that the surgeon was actually God. Because when I went for my first scan, they said that the aorta had grown, that they were amazed, and I didn't need to have that first operation. So this was the first miracle. So that reminded me again of God's goodness. Oliver is a true gift to us. He is a delight and we love him unconditionally. Oliver has got a secure future. He loves God, he's happily married and he's got a great job and he lives life to the max. I am so thankful for this journey. I'm thankful for what I've learnt through it. And I just want to just say that if you are in need of a miracle, reach out and let your church pray for you. Because it was the prayers of others that carried Julian and I through and we just couldn't pray for ourselves. And the verse in Ephesians 3 verse 20 says, Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than we can ask or imagine. So church, we do need to stand together and we do need to imagine and believe in our God of miracles. Can I just pray for you? Lord God, I want to thank you right now for the miracle of Oliver and the miracle that you have done in our lives, Lord God. I never want to take this for granted, Lord, and I want to remember your goodness, Lord. But Lord Jesus, I want to help and pray and stand in the gap for those who are in desperate need of a miracle, whether it be for their own health or the health of a loved one, or even a financial breakthrough, Lord Jesus. You are the God of the immeasurably more. And Lord Jesus, there is no one better to, but to leave this with you, Lord. Lord, stretch our faith. Help us to believe, Lord. Remove any doubts that we have, Lord Jesus, as we as a church stand together, expecting and believing for miracles. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Have a great day. See you soon.